Bookers, and welcome to Book of Catherine and the Vote 2018, and a big celebration dance and the upcoming election dates for the primaries of the summer 2018, and there are a few. But first, let's do just a little bit of a victory dance, because you guys deserve it. And also, I've been doing uh, the new programs that I talked about in a previous video, the new programs that I got cleared from my doctor from the um, Insider Movies, I think it was 23, and I have been doing the new programs that my doctor gave me, and so I am able to do a bit of a victory dance for you. So this is the beauty of getting procedures done. Getting procedures, back to procedures. I saw the movie for Insider Movies. We're going to be doing a movie it's called Molly's Game. And in it, she screwed up her spine when she was young. And hey, they did a spinal procedure. And they put all these things into her back. They did all this spinal stuff. And guess what? She went on to be an Olympian. An Olympian when they did a spinal surgery. And I was like, it's a procedure. Today, would they do that procedure? No. No. They would just put them on pain meds. They'd be like, sorry, you don't want us to invade, would you? So I got a procedure. Actually, I got a few. I got a few. And I'm going to share with you my first day out after getting um, uh, the second procedure. So I'm going to have that coming up. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's get on with it. So um, let us do a victory dance. Let me see. Okay, let me put my feet apart. Okay, let me be careful. So I already did a video tonight, so I need to be careful. So I'm still in pain. So let's do a victory dance. So I, how do I do a victory dance? Uh, let's see here. Go voters, go voters, go, go, go voters. I wasn't a cheerleader, so I'm having to invent one. Go voters, go voters, go, go, go voters, go voters, go voters, go, go, go voters, go voters, go voters, go, go, go voters, go voters, go voters! Woo! You didn't just do 50%. You did more than 50%. And you didn't just do 60. You didn't just do two thirds. You did more than two thirds, which is why I got extra special dressed up for you today because holy freaking cow, like, holy freaking cow, like, holy freaking cow, do you realize that you guys did that in like, what did I, I did, we figured it out in like, what, a week? A week? You did that? Do you realize that? Do you realize that? Oh my gosh, I'm just so, so now I just, oh, whatever. So go voters, go voters, go, go, go voters. I'll give you your primary dates in two seconds. I promise, I promise. Go, go, go voters. My legs are really, really like buttressed right now. Like they're super, super high. Like I'm in a plie. Like I'm like, hold it, hold that spine in place. Hold that spine in place. Yeah, my doctor would be really proud. Go voters, go voters, go voters. Woo! And I'll tell you the consequences of that, like the super, super big consequences of that. <laughs> like I'll tell you the super huge consequences of that after I show you the primary dates. So, okay, I have fully worn out my spine. So I'll go show you the primary dates and then we're gonna have to go, we're gonna have to go sit down. So, oh yay, did you see that? I could lift up my arms, like, isn't that exciting? Oh yeah, that's all the, that's all the physical therapy with the losing the weight and then the procedures. The procedures have done so much. Isn't that exciting? Oh, I could do, I can do all that. Oh, it's so exciting. Okay, let's go on to the primary dates. What is coming up? Because there's quite a few coming up. And now that we have more time, you guys can share your tips and we can do 100%. We can get everything cleared out. Oh my goodness, because I know that some of you guys are finding out you've seen the primaries the primary states. You've seen the sanctuary states. You're finding out the full list of sanctuary states and you're regretting your votes. You were like, oh, we don't really need to vote. We don't re This guy's such a nice guy. He's such a nice guy. Like, he's a good guy. Like, I've known him for years. He's a good guy. He would, and then you saw the sanctuary states and you were like, I should have voted otherwise. So other states, we're going to be ready this time. No one's going to regret their vote this time. Let's do it. Okay, let's do the dates. 
Okay, so then we will talk about what is going on online and the updates and everything like that. So here are the dates that are coming up in June and July. There's not a lot in July. There's a lot of runoffs. It's interesting how the states are doing it. So let's just go through them really quickly. And some are sanctuary states. As we've gone over, sanctuary states are very different. There's a lot of them. There's 12. We've learned that. And they're covering up that information. Very, very interesting. So if it's already out, I'll link that right here. And if it's not, uh, yeah, look for it. So when it comes out. <laughs> so here we go. Um, so the next primary dates. So for clean the GOP to be ready and to get it out there. Ah, trying to get through here. Uh, okay, so June 12th. That's the next big date. That is going to be a Tuesday. Both of these are Tuesdays. So we just had June 5th, and so now we're going to do June 12th. And so June 12th is a big day. You can see how many states are on it. By the way, in my sanctuary states, I said that um, there are only these states, but apparently Nevada's on it. I don't know. Nevada, you need to look up because one site said that you were a different day. It said that you were already done. And then this site that I've been using, it says that you are actually on the 12th, which so far it's been proving correct, this site that I've been using. So go ahead and... You know, that means you still have time to go ahead and vote on it, which is great. That's another sanctuary state that actually has a chance. So that's wonderful. I'm going to put that in the description box. All right, so these are the states that actually are sanctuary states right here. If you don't know what they are, see my research. So, uh, and my video, that actually, there are what sanctuary policies are. That video is definitely out. So, got to see that. So, it's not what you think. They are not being honest with us in the media. It's not what you think at all. So, I wish it was, but it's not. So, um, North Dakota, big deal. They have a really bad guy in there. I haven't looked up every single one of these, so, but bottom line is they all have to be cleaned out. From bottom to top, local government all the way up to the top, people from local government been, have been saying already what a change in the town it's been, just having new people in. And um, oh, I'll give you those updates afterwards. So, we've got North Dakota, Maine, Utah, Rhode Island, Nevada, South Carolina, we need to keep in Trey Gowdy. That's why the media is hitting him so far. He is the most, uh, how should we say, damaging? Eff he is the most effective Republican. Like, he's the most effective congressman. Like, he's the one congressman, like, really doing his job on the Capitol Hill. He sinks at interviewing, but they, they just take his words and they twist it. He's so good at being a lawyer, and you have to trust what he does in Congress. That's what he's skilled at. Media is not his thing. They know how to twist him around and everything like that, and he's been thrust in the media. You don't understand how often they actually interview him. You guys just see clips in the media. But when they interview him, they blitz him like a celebrity. Now, celebrities are used to it. They're used to, like, they're used to 6 a.m. till, you know, midnight runs, Boom, 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 with 50 million questions shoving you in and wearing you down and tweeting. It, it, celebrities are used to that, but they're paid millions of dollars for that, and they're trained for it, and they're given all these tools and tips. Not congressmen. That's not at all what we would nominated them to do. Like, they're not supposed to be a celebrity. That's not the training they're given. And so that's what you're seeing in this, like, deer in the headlights, because he's nonstop. They're really hitting him, and they're doing that on purpose because they want him to slip up just once. Just once so they can get him out of there. So you still just... It's, you got to get him in, right? So uh, South Carolina, you're going to have to go out and vote and make sure that he stays in because of all the negative press. That's just because they, he's the one they want out most. And Virginia. Virginia, you, it's time to go new. New, 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 and all new people. And don't go with the shiny guy. Not that da 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 Go with the guy that, like, straightforward, like, no charm, no big smile. Not the shiny flyers, not the big money, not the one that's all clean cut and has it not what you've seen before. Not just the other side and what you've seen before. You have to go with like, you know, someone like you that knows what you're going through. Uh, then the 26th, June 26th, uh, Colorado and Utah are both sanctuary states, which weren't they? And of course, they weren't told about it. Maryland, your time to shine, baby. Oklahoma, I just, I was just like, oh, Oklahoma. I keep thinking of the clip that we did in Insider Movies. That's why I put three exclamation marks because I did that thing in Insider Movies. If you watch Insider Movies, you know what I'm talking about. Both South Carolina and Mississippi are doing a runoff. Apparently they do primaries and then they do a runoff. Everything can change in that runoff. They're going to count on you not knowing about the runoff. So go and do it. 
you got to make sure that you're there to vote for the runoff. And remember, vote in person. You cannot do absentee ballot. And make sure you're there to actually man the polls. Big, big deal. Big, big deal. Man the polls and do, and uh, man the polls. You know, man the polls. Uh, do what you've been doing. Make a big difference. Okay, right in between there, the 12th and the 26th, Arkansas, you are having a runoff. You're having a runoff. You've already had your things before we started doing videos, but you actually have a runoff. You need to go there, Arkansas. You need to get in there because I think there's a really bad guy in there. You need to see if you can get him out. Hopefully there's a runoff that you can get a new guy in there in your runoff. I really, really hope that because that guy from, I think, I think Arkansas is where that Facebook guy was from. I really, you've got to get him out. You've got, you so, oh God. Okay. And then, um, in July, Alabama, and can you see that down there? In July, Alabama and Georgia uh, both are having runoffs. Alabama and Georgia, a bit, I guess in the South, a runoff is a big thing. That's great. I think it's more fair. Actually, it uh, means people are more interested in being involved in the democratic process, I guess. So that's, that's the only thing I can imagine. So it's more fair that way. So, um, so in July, Alabama and Georgia are having a runoff whatever that means. So be aware of that, Alabama and Georgia. So I think both of you guys have a ban against sanctuary city policies in your state. Your legislatures did that for you. You should be thanking your Latin stars. I know that the press actually crucified them for that. And uh, they actually saw through it and saw what they really were, not what the press said they were, but knew what they actually were, like understood the underlying a business behind them and what they're bringing in. And if you look at like the crises, like the opioid crises and the sex trafficking and all that kind of stuff, it's not as bad in the South. And that's because your legislatures took a stand. You guys really have to like give them credit for that. So give them big credit for that. Like everywhere you see sanctuary cities and things like that, and sanctuary, like where it's more dense, that's where the opioid credit, like look at New England. New England's so bad. And then you look at the Midwest. It's so freaking bad in Detroit and in Chicago and all that stuff. It's just so freaking bad. And in the South, it's just not as bad. Well, that's where legislatures really crack down on the sanctuary cities. It just, it has nothing to do with like, have you noticed with the hashtags, they say separating families? They don't say like protect the kids or protect the moms. And they don't say protect DACA. They say separating families, tearing families apart. That's what they focus on. Because when you put into sanctuary city, when you take away sanctuary city policies, then you take the criminals, like the, the criminals go away to jail. Yeah, it separates the families. The criminals get locked up or the criminals go and get deported outside of the U.S. And it separates families. And that's the whole, that's the whole point is that's why it's, it's an interesting choice of words. They're really, really good at manipulating language. So it's an art form. So here are the rest of the dates. I made sure to write them down. Just, I know that I already did them in my Clean the GOP video, which I'll try and link below if I can. I don't have as much time anymore, um, but I'll read them off to you just to be fair. And then we'll go into the updates. So uh, let's see here. Alaska is August 21st. August 21st, Arizona, August 28th, Connecticut, August 14th, Delaware, September 6th, Florida, August 28th, Hawaii, August 11th. We have so many. It's such a good thing. Kansas, August 7th, uh, Louisiana. You don't vote until primary day. You're going to really get hit, man. Don't let anyone influence you. You're going to get hit so hard. And then your runoffs are later. Oh, my gosh. They're going to pressure you to vote just like you normally would. And don't. It's still a primary. It's still a primary. It's still a primary. They're going to tell you it's a runoff as if the other guy, as if the GOP candidate already won. Don't fall for that. Don't fall for that. Don't fall for it. Okay. Massachusetts, September 4th. Michigan, August 7th. Minnesota, August 14th. Missouri. Uh, is that... Oh, Missouri, <laughs> August 7th, New Hampshire, no, sorry, I wrote Missouri in two lines, and I was like, what in the world is that date? It's not a date. Missouri is two lines. It really is August 7th. The date is written very clearly. I just didn't get three lines down. All right, so New Hampshire, uh, again, 9-11, what the heck. So New York was nice. They moved it back to 9-13, and Rhode Island moved it back to 9-12. Thank you guys for actually considering it. Unfortunately, Rhode Island wouldn't make themselves a nice sanctuary state. Wish you just stick through it a little bit more. So, and New York has a ton of sanctuary cities. Aye. So, 
Uh, Tennessee is August 7th or August 2nd, 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 August 2nd. Uh, Washington is August 7th. Vermont is August 14th. And Wisconsin is August 14th. And Wyoming is August 21st. August 21st. So, yeah, that's everyone. And, yeah, that's everyone. So that's a ton. That's a ton of states that we still have left. And that means the media is going to be going nuts. I mean, that's why... Um, okay, like, let's go ahead and do the update, but I need to sit down for that. <laughs> so I've kind of worn myself out, so I need to go sit down. So we will go ahead and switch into a different atmosphere, and we will be back. Okay, we're back. So let's talk a little bit about what they're actually doing out there and what's actually changed, because a lot has changed. So you guys were so successful that uh at first they just didn't say anything you know they weren't talking about the primaries at all they at first they weren't talking primaries coming up to it. remember they were trying to distract us with other things like here here shiny object all the time and then um when primary day came they were like oh democrats primary day let's uh, and all the celebrities came out primary day and then as primary day went on they kind of like suddenly were like oh entertainment here oh entertainment here like think of something else think of something else and we kind of had a push forward to be like no like no, like, keep going. Like, they really were trying to just suck you in and in, into, like, look somewhere else, look somewhere else. And it was really discouraging, too, to kind of see. Um, it really told you a lot. Like, you learned. Like, I learned a lot that day. I really, like, some of my heroes on the, um, well, I guess the conservative media side, I don't know. It's really hard to say who the heck stands where. I still don't know. I'm so early into it. I'm still listening to people. I'm so early into it that I don't really know where everyone stands. Like, I don't really know who's in what section of what. I'm still too new to it all. So I'm sure, like, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but it was hard. It was really hard to see, like, June 5th come and go. And, uh be in the middle of June 5th, in the middle of this big battle, and just watching some of them on on social media just completely ignoring the vote. Like, completely, you know, being like, let's talk about something else. Like, they're being part of the distraction. Like, let's go look somewhere else. And I was like, it is your, you know, because the thing is, is that they... They make part of their business. And someone said something afterwards. I saw a, I saw, I can't remember who it was. And I saw someone later actually say, actually say that the, the conservative side also plays the victim role. Like they play the right actually. And I have been saying there are no right groups. There are no right groups that don't do anything. And they, they actually said the right plays identity politics as well. And the victimhood and everything. And I had been like, no, 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 no. Until the day of the vote came. And the opportunity came for the conservative side that's being beaten down and being harassed and thrown in jail and... crying out on Twitter to their leaders constantly and being like, I'm getting fired. I'm getting fired for making a joke. I'm getting fired for saying something on my Facebook page. I'm getting jailed for saying something on my Facebook page. I'm getting suspended from school. And here comes voting day. And it's their most powerful day of the year. Here they are going around, you know, I mean, there's a ton of them. And they go around and they make their living speaking and being the champions of the right. Because there's nobody else to be the champion of the right, if you can call it the right. I don't think of it as the right. I think of it because, like I said in my for my liberals uh video which you can look it up i can't link it i don't have the time to do that stuff anymore but in my for my liberals video i said that they're not really saying conservative things anymore and they're not like they're saying some like they bring up abortion every once in a while uh 
But for the most part, it's not conservative what we would consider conservative ideals. Like the left is trying to drive it there now because they want to divide us. But now it's things like history, like debating real facts about history. That's just history class. Uh, and debating critique and analysis and mostly to me, it's being able to think freely and have open critical thought and uh, being able to question. Like somebody was like, um, well, how can you question somebody on the right now if you're like actually sharing their videos? And I was like, well, what are you talking about? Like, were you just not, I've never seen anything like that. Like you sit at the table and that's how, like iron sharpens iron. Isn't that the saying? Like iron sharpens iron. And I realized that was like a trick of the left. Like that's why they get us on like talk shows all the time. And they're like, here, because if you, like I remember Shapiro said once, he was like, it's easy to debate the left. It's so easy to get in front of a college student and just debate the left. He's like, there is no skill to that whatsoever. And yet that's what they all do, like 40 weekends a year or something like that, 40 times a year on the, and go debate. The, and I'm like, if that's all you ever do is talk and debate, like the weaker side, that's something that's so easy, you know, just because they aren't educated well, that doesn't, that's not iron sharpening iron. That's just cutting through butter. That's just cutting through butter. And do you ever get stronger that way? No, you get weaker eventually. And, and so, you know, in my world, at least the way the upper echelon does it, like we're always like, we're always like, we're always at each other. We're always not at, we don't even see it as at each other. We're always talking to one another. You know, and being like, I don't know, and do you think, and da 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 That's normal, everyday conversation. It's how we love one another. And I was like, that's how we all get stronger. I mean, that's what makes me so good at my jobs. Like, that's what makes me such a great thinker. And I'm just kind of like... It's what I ask you guys to do. I'm asking you guys questions all the time. I'm like, here, think about this. Ask yourself this. Let's, let's think. Like, let's, let's go research together. Let's ask questions together. Let's do this. Like, you know, I, I don't get it. Because that's how, like, even the Constitution was made that way. Like, the men got in a room who agreed together, but they argued together until something was so pounded out. They all agreed, but they pounded and 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 pounded until something like hard as gold came out, like hard as, you know, something that was unbreakable came out. But that didn't happen because two opposing sides came together. That happened because great minds who thought alike were willing to oppose one another and disagree, but they were still on the same side. You know, I don't, I don't see that as like... I was just like, did the left like do something with that stupid Ronald Reagan question of like, I don't like to question a Republican or something like that. And I was like, you know, context. Think about context. You think Reagan like he's he, he has another quote that says, like, when we're in a room and we are discussing policy, like, I don't want to hear like what the other side will think. I want to hear the end of the question is like solution. Like he talks about how they debated. It was a regular part of their everyday thing is debate. Why doesn't anyone focus on that? Isn't that questioning another Republican is sitting in a cabinet meeting and like debating the heck out of each other? Why doesn't anyone think about that? Like, I'm like, that. that is the essence of it. It's just very odd to me. So I, I was just discouraged. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about because I was just like, well, if you're not willing to be like, go out and express yourselves and go get your power back and choose someone who's going to protect you from sanctuary city policies and from the opioid crisis and from sex slaves and sex trading and from being snatched off the street. If you don't, you know, think that someone's power to vote and the Constitution isn't enough to protect, like, if that's not something important, 
If you're not I I don't understand that. So I learned a lot on voting day and you guys will watch on June 12th. You'll learn a lot. Just watch and you'll learn about motivations about people. And it's the same thing with the media. It's the same thing. Um And I know that there's a difference, like, of being like, well, I didn't know, like, who to tell people to vote for. You don't tell people to vote for anyone then. You just say, go express yourself, go vote. Like, there was a time I remember when MTV, when I was really young, MTV was just like, go vote. Just go vote. Just go vote. It didn't say who to vote for, but it was like, go vote. Go vote. Use your power. Go vote. Like. Just say go vote. I don't get it. I just don't get it. And so what happens is people end up getting engaged, you know, because it's an addictive thing and they stay on there and do that. And yeah, so I don't know. It was an interesting thing. And you learned a lot about the left. And then all of a sudden, so they were distracting and everything like that. But then, then something happened later on. Like then we didn't hear anything yesterday. And, of course, they publish different results. Of course, they publish different results. Um, sometimes they didn't publish it at all. And then today, I saw two things happen. The first thing that happened was suddenly they changed, like, the matrix, like, the world they presented to us. They suddenly presented a world of, like, mass, mass hate, of, like, conservative hate. Pictures of, like, horrible people with horrible signs everywhere. Really ugly. And, of course, we have no idea when those pictures were taken. And it was totally meant to shame anyone into ever voting conservative. Like, it was clear that they knew that people from all sides, all spectrums, had voted. And they wanted to shame people and be like, this is who you are when you vote for them. And I was like, those people are crazy people. Like, you're posting pictures of nutsos. Like, you're posting picture, the guy on the corner of the street in San Francisco that if you offer him, like, you know, some soup, he'll throw it on the ground. Like, he doesn't know what he's thinking. Like, you can't put that up there and use that against, you know, thinking people who are going out about their daily lives and thinking through deeply and researching and trying to figure out, you know, through research and study, you know, who they want to vote for. You can't. You know, you can, but it isn't going to work. Like, no. No, we're going to fight for ourselves. And, and they just want that money. They're just trying to snatch that money back from us. And I can see now that we have so many states ahead of us, it's going to be a hard fight. They are going to do everything they can to make you seem, make you feel like you are doing the worst thing, the most evil thing in the world to ever vote in a conservative-like manner. They're going to paint the conservatives in the worst way. And the best thing I would say to do is really, really, really arm yourself with, like, who really is that way, you know, because it really is the Democratic Party. That's their history, and that's who they are now. They are all those things. So if you arm yourself with things like Dinesh D'Souza's book, that's the easiest thing to do is read his books, like Read the Big Lie, and then go back. He has, like, 17 books. It's all just historical fact. Like, it kind of freaked me out. Like, it really screwed with my brain. Like, I started reading uh, The Big Lie, and it just messed with my brain, like, my brain wires. Like, it kind of, like, knocked me out a bit because it was like reading one of my own books. Like, it was so similar to my book. Um, a book that I had written that I just, I, it was, it was so, and that's a good thing. That's a, that's a good thing because that book, that book did incredible things. I, so I can't recommend it highly enough. Like it really, it really changed so many people's lives. So in dramatic, dramatic ways and it shifted a number of worlds in dramatic ways. And I just, if there's a writer out there that can do that, which I didn't think there could ever be, I really mourned my ability not to write anymore. 
And if there's another right out there that can do that, you know, there's pain because you're just kind of like, God, I thought I was the only one. You know what I mean? Like there's somebody else like in my head. That's hard. And then you realize that you really want that for people. Like you really, really want that for people. It's such a gift to the world. Like it just because it, it's so good because people love it. I know you're going to love it. And if he has so many more books, I just, I know you're going to love it. And that will be like a shield. Because when you have facts and truth, it's, it ends up being like, kind of like this, this outer steel. So that even though when you see it online, you just got history on you. The reason all that stuff works is because they know that you don't. They know that you don't know all the sanctuary cities. They know they've kept that from you. You know, they know that you don't have history. They know that you can't find out Hitler's history. They know that they've erased, like, Dubois' book. You know, they, they know all of that's gone. And they, they did. They, they really tried to erase him as much as they could. And it, it, it's just one of those unique personality traits where it did the opposite. It made them stronger, which is a similar story to mine. Like the same thing happened to me. When you start going into a community, like I was in a cult and I started writing about the cult and there's stuff that they did, you know what I mean? And that to shut me up and it is a... Some people it works. They're used to it working. It didn't. It made me so much stronger. You're going to really love it. It's a rare gift to have a person like that out there. So. And I feel like we're getting like this generation of people like that out there that put others before themselves. Like, I feel like Candace Owen is, is the same way, who doesn't really see, like, a party. They just see people. Like, if we remove the party system, I don't think they'd ask to form necessarily a party. They would be happy representing just, you know, everyone, if that makes sense. It, it is a good thing that we have people like that coming up. Thank goodness. And, oh, so this is what I was going to say, is that now you get online and you Google, like I Google primary dates, and I used to always get Google drop down upcoming primary dates. That doesn't happen anymore. It did that forever. This whole time I've been researching upcoming primary dates, and I would get the exact same websites every single time, every single time. Now, now it says totally different. And now it's like upcoming, you know, primary deadlines. And then it shows the next deadlines for when to enter into the primary race. And I'm like, people are entering? And it's like the word's gotten out. And I was like, that's why they're changing the matrix. The word's gotten out that people are winning. And then I Googled something else and it was like, pri it did say primary, upcoming primary dates. It said primary election results. And the primaries have been going on since January, like January or March. And I have been Googling primary for, you know, two weeks now all the time because my thing that memorizes book things or whatever is like broken so I have to constantly retype it in so I know what pulls up and I'm telling you right now like primary election results was not coming up ever no one knew the primaries were going on it was not on the public conscience and it is now that's that's just big like, that's, 
ridiculously big. And it's just kind of like, that tells me like, I'm like, oh, well, conservative leaders who wanted to ignore it, the people could care less what you think. They're interested and they're going for it. And not only that, but now the Republican people, like that's, that, that was even better. I was like, not only is the media now going after conservatives or whatever it is. I, well, the reason I say conservatives as separate from Republicans is because now Republicans are attacking the people who are outside the Republic. I guess some Republicans, I guess some, there were some seats that were run by non-Republicans. I'm getting the feeling that they're called the Freedom Caucus, and it's not like an actual party. I don't, don't get me wrong on this. I am like two hours into this. So please, I'm two hours in. But they just label it the Freedom Caucus because they don't have a party. They're just the people that, that's the label the media has given them because they don't have a party. They came in and they're just, so they call them the Freedom Caucus. Which I'm like, that's a great name. Like, they are. They are free. They don't have a party. They're just for the people. Freedom Caucus, right? Well, the GOP is attacking the Freedom Caucus out of nowhere. They're spreading lies about him. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, the GOP is like, well, you know, the Freedom Caucus offered up a bill that offered amnesty. And the Freedom Caucus is like, we did not. What the heck are you talking about? And I was like, oh. Like, and the people were like, gosh, like, let the finger pointing begin. And I saw the comments below and people were like, get your act together, GP GOP. And I was like, the GOP doesn't need to get their act together. They know exactly what they're doing. You saw their votes. They are laser precision. They're not stupid. They know exactly what they're doing. And they know how to protect those seats. And they know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. And they're saying, oh, these people who are running, they're not actually running for what they say they're running. They're actually doing what we're doing. They're actually running on one platform and doing another. Right. Right. They're putting their life, their family, their kids. They're going, they're putting everything on the line in this atmosphere, in this media, that's when they're choosing to go into politics. Right. And going to back off on their constituents on all their promises. Right. Right. And I'm just like... <laughs> like the GOP is not like welcoming in the new Freedom Caucus, they're just they're blaming everything on them. And the Freedom Caucus is just, all they keep saying is like, no, we didn't. No. No, we didn't. Like, stop it. Like, no, we didn't. And it's funny because the actual people who follow the GOP are just like, knock it off. But what's really sad is that they actually believe the GOP. They're actually like, oh, the GOP must have gotten their information wrong. And I was like, this GOP must be really smooth talkers. Like, what do they do? Like, what Christian yarn do they spin? And all I can think of is that the DNC is just so bad that it's easy to look so good. It's really not that hard. When the DNC looks this freaking bad, when they're like in a bloodbath up to their arms, they're in a tub full of blood and they're just covered in blood and they've got the innards all over them. It makes this GOP guy just stabbing someone in the back. It doesn't make him look so bad. You know, this guy is in the tub with a chainsaw going. Nah, nah, nah. So this guy over here, the GOP guy that's all dressed in a suit going, stab you in the back, stab you. It doesn't look so bad, does it? You're just kind of like, oh, he's the nice guy. I'll shake his hand because, you know, he's just stabbing in the back with like a fork. Just stab, stab, stab or whatever, you know, because he's not covered in blood with a, you know, machete or whatever. And I'm like, he's still stabbing the guy in the back. You know, he's still got a thing. He's still stabbing him, like still going to hurt him, still going to cut his throat. Like he's still got to go. 
He's still doing it. You got to see what they do, not what they say. So if you haven't seen that, if I haven't linked it yet, you got to see it here. So on what they do, not what they say, you know, how they fooled everyone. And yeah, so I just, that's what the GOP is going to do. But when the time comes, if, you know, at, at this rate, at what happened, they'll get the majority and they'll have to play along in order to keep their seats. That's what's great. That's what's really great. I mean, at this point, they're going to have to play along anyway to, when they have so many seats. Because it sounds like the Vroom Caucus has barely any seats. It just sounds like every time something goes wrong, they just go point. So that the blame isn't on them, you know. But the bottom line is that when the votes come down, when the chips come down and vote, someone will be there to vote for you. And that's all that matters. Someone will be there to cast your vote. That's all that matters is you want someone there to cast your vote for you and you want someone there to undo all the laws that were piled on to like make an overbearing government you know that was made it you know so large like I heard someone commentator being like he's really rolled back the government like he's rolled back more regulations on everything like he's rolled back more regulations than Ronald Reagan and I was like Man, you make it sound like he is some kind of radical, whatever. And I was like, you are forgetting to mention how many regulations, like, the DNC put in. You are really not mentioning Agenda 21 and, like, the three new branches of government and the 25 layers they added. Like, maybe he chipped away at 10 of it. But, like, Reagan had a government this big. So he chipped away this big. You know, our, the POTUS right now has a government like this big compared to Reagan. Are you crazy? It's no comparison. It... But it's good because there are some leaders who are actually turning the tide. Like, they're actually turning their rhetoric. And they're actually, like... But they're not, they're, they're turning the rhetoric in, in positive ways of like, they actually are, I don't know, I don't know if they're just trying to sway people for the GOP. They're doing like tours. And they seem like they're touring for the GOP. And they just have a thing of like, people ask them, like they ask them the hard question. They're like, well, the GOP has not been friendly to Trump. Like they have not been friendly. They have not been next to him. They have not helped him out. They have not done this. They haven't done this. And when I hear that, I don't hear, I don't freaking care about the back room and be a jerk and this and that. I don't care if you get along. What I care about is when it sits down and it's time to vote with the DNC on a legislative bill for us, like a tax bill. Like that's what I care about. I could care less about personalities. I could care less about tweets. Care less about all that. I care about the Constitution and what's here on this little table. Come to the Senate. Like, that's what I care about. When I go to Washington, I sit in that seat. That's what I watch. That's what I care about. Laws right here. Undoing or redoing or redoing or un... For us. That's all I care about. And they were like, oh, well, you know, he just, he's so brash. Like, he's good on the big things, but in the little things, but in the little thing, he's just, he's so unexpected. You know, he's just, you never know what he's going to do. He's just, you know, he doesn't, it doesn't include people in the, and I was like, he doesn't trust you. Did you earn it? Like, We've all read Cheryl Atkinson by now. And we, like, he came in there saying, drain the swamp. Now, I didn't know anything about any of that, but we're sitting there looking at the FBI, and we're reading Cheryl Atkinson, who's a CBS News correspondent. And we're reading Twitter, and we're finding out that they have astroturfing going in there. And you're telling us, believe in a free economy, and we're finding out a free economy doesn't exist. You're telling us to build businesses and everything, and that is impossible. And you know it. You know there's no such thing as a free economy with things like Twitter and Facebook. There's a monopoly on Google because of their astroturfing sections. I could care less 
about the little things. And then another guy was just like, well, everybody wants it their own way. And all I heard, like when I listened to these things about the GOP and why they rub with the POTUS the wrong way, do you know what I always hear them say? Listen closely to all these descriptions of the GOP. Well, they just want it theirs, or they just want it this way, or they're used to this, or they're used to the, and I am just like, I don't hear one thing about us. I don't hear one thing about us. And that just ticks me off that they're traveling, promoting the GOP. Because I'm like, guess what? There are other people trying to run on your ticket. They're not running as the Freedom Caucus. They're running on the GOP ticket. You guys are calling them the Freedom Caucus to separate them out. That is a low freaking move. That's what the media is doing and you're joining in. That just makes us like you less. It would be nice if there was just one party out there that would get their eyes off the mother mirror and turn around and look at the people who voted for them. Just why don't you all sit down and watch Mr. Smith goes to Washington? Because it is clear that the entire GOP, I know that the DNC is gone. Like, I know that they're gone. I know that they're basically a mafia criminal organization. But it's clear that the GHP is just a bunch of, like, preening little schoolboys who are used to getting their own way. They're just so settled in. They're just so settled in. They're settled into their elite world in D.C. And that is just their world, and it's what they're used to. They're used to that world. They are just so sunken in they're used to the power they're used to the privilege they're used to the elite life and you know who gave that to them us baby we gave that power to them they never should have forgotten us not only did they forget us but they let other people make us bleed and now our kids go to school and they get Hitler's, literally Hitler's programming. You lead his, you read his 21 point outline to program his society. It's the Democratic Party's 2016 election campaign outline. That's what they're teaching our school kids. You could care less. Because it doesn't affect whether or not your senator's chair has a nameplate that's new or shiny as the guy next to him. You gotta get that money, baby. You gotta get those funny. What you're doing is you guys are invested in the house of cards. point is, is that show is coming to a close. It's our turn now. It's time to return to a government, a democracy, the one that was intended. It's our turn. It's our turn to rule our own selves again. All of us, the 90%, liberals, libertarians, independents, moderates, conservatives, even Republicans, and maybe a few GOP, but I get the feeling they don't remember what it's like to be you and me. Peace out, everybody. Have fun voting. Share with each other prostate lines. Make sure you keep it covert. This is going to be war. War. You've read about revolution in your books. Well, you're living through history. This is a revolution. We're taking our country back. We're making it what we want it to be. One that serves you and me.
to the best of its ability. It's been a long, long time. We just forgot what it was able to do. And Google and Yahoo and Twitter and Facebook, they just led us astray for a while and we got cut up. But now, starting to step outside of it and see it again. Starting to get books offline and see what real history is and reality is just not what they make it out to be. And that makes voting really really easy in the end. I love you guys. Congratulations on the June 5th vote. That was incredible work. I look forward to the June 12th vote and the 26th runoffs and all the votes coming in September. New England, New England, I know that you are so liberal. But everything you love and fight for, those are the things that the conservatives are fighting for now. Like it really is. Like free speech. Like that's the other party now. You really should be gone over. There's like one or two differences, but your party's really left you and they backstabbed you. They gave your states away. They gave your states away. You can't understand why, why everyone's so sick in the opioid crisis. And it's because of your own DNC. watch it down here below. Good night, everybody. Peace out. Give it a thumbs up and share. Bye. Congratulations.